Hullbreaker Horror. Of course, one for the Izzet side that may come up in this match. And for Mono Green, uh, a little bit of more early game pressure in Ascended Pack Leader, uh, along with some tasty beatdowns with Uvenwald Oddity. Again, cards that may come up in this matchup. So we've seen this style of matchup for what feels like a couple of months now, right? Mm -hmm. When Innistrad Midnight Hunt was Magic's newest set, and now Innistrad Crimson Vow is Magic's newest set. These decks have still remained because... The power level of both, very, very high. It is indeed. And uh, we've been chatting about the, the favorite matchups, and it, we kind of all came to the conclusion that Mono Green doesn't have the best of times against this Epiphany deck unless they get an absolutely ridiculous start. And that hand Brad Nelson wasn't too keen on, so he's going to ship it back and get a nicer, newer hand, he thinks. Well, myself personally is playing Mono Green quite a bit in standard. I don't mind the Is It Epiphany matchup. Mm -hmm. I care about as much as they are prepared for me. So what do I mean by that? I mean, if they have a ton of Demon Bolts and a ton of Leers and a ton of Fading Hopes and Divide by Zeros, then I care mm -hmm. because it's harder. If they are kind of splitting up what they're doing because they have to prepare for the Mirror and they have to prepare for Mono White and maybe some of the black base decks, then I care less. And as you have seen with Toru's deck list, as our team went over it a little bit, he's kind of hedging against everything, right? So there's <laughs> one Holebreaker Horror. There's one Goldspan Dragon. There's only one Leer. There's two copies of Fading Hope as opposed to four. You know, so there's a little bit of this, a little bit of that going around here with Toru's deck list. If he was solely focused on Mono Green Alley, mm -hmm. I'd be really scared. But he's kind of hedging across the board here. So I don't think this matchup ends up being as bad for Brad as it could be, given what people were expecting for the metagame this weekend. I do like uh, Toru's start here so far, though. Using that Demon Bolt, getting that Mana Dork off the battlefield, that, of course, allows... Brad Nelson to cheat in some of the bigger things ahead of schedule. Big things like, oh, you know, Old Growth Troll, which is likely going to get Thundering Rebuked as it comes to Toru's side of things. But he does have that Galvanic Iteration, which may be of interest to hold on to that Thundering Rebuke to be able to get two threats off the board next turn. Yeah, it looks like Brad's going to go with Kazandu Mammoth this turn. Mm -hmm. Does have a land to play next turn to make that into a 5-5 creature. And also has another three drop to play. Of course, Lair of the Hydra is going to enter the battlefield tap, so your turn can very simply be Lair, depending on what the draws, of course. But play Lair, attack for five, then play Old Growth Troll post combat. If he does draw an untapped land, then he can play Uvalon Oddity and attack for four additional hasty damage. So we'll see what Nelson does want to do, depending on what his draw step is. But for Toru right now, you mentioned the Galvanic Iteration, you mentioned the Thundering Rebuke as a removal spell. So those two cards in combination can take care of two threats once Brad develops his battlefield. A little bit further. So the name of the game for Toru right now is to just keep these creatures off the battlefield. Make sure that there isn't this massive amount of power coming towards him every turn. No spell played. We're going to flip to Knight. Gets to draw a card and discard here. Finds an expressive iteration off the top. So Clearwater Pathway is going to end up in the graveyard. There's another old growth troll for Brad Nelson. So you'll see here, there's the Lair of the Hydra entering the battlefield tap. Here comes the Kazandu Mammoth in, in for five points of damage. It's going to come through safely and cleanly. Going to knock Toru down to 16. Now your follow-up play is that old growth troll, as I did mention. And now Toru does have the opportunity to kill both of these creatures, the Galvanic Iteration in combination with Thundering Rebuke, or we might see an expressive iteration. So, you know, there's some options here. Yeah. Unexpected windfall off the top of the library here for Toru. wonder if that changes his game plan at all. Or if we just go for the expressive iteration and keep digging. So that's, what's nine points of damage? That's more than half the life total. Can also pop up that Lair of the Hydra. So I'm thinking it might be time to kill some stuff here, but uh, Toru is going to go for expressive iteration first and foremost. Let's see what's on top of the library. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at a couple of cards Ooh. here. Further develop the battlefield. At least has a land in hand to play. Maybe able to find one off of expressive iteration as well. Brad's hand is pretty strong. He does have a creature kind of taken care of, like the Goldspan Dragon that was just found thanks to the Blizzard Brawl, depending on how things do line up. Now you're going to see, I think, an Iteration plus Rebuke kill both of these creatures, it looks like. Yep. Let's get these big old knuckleheads. Oh, if they're, if they're knuckleheads, they're small, usually, according to Cedric. What, what are these guys? Bozos? Bozos? Monsters? Those bozos sound. Bozos. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're all, it's kind of interchangeable, if I'm yeah. being honest. I mean, they're just very large boys. Both of them now dead, courtesy of Galvanic Iteration and the Thundering Rebuke. So things are looking okay here for uh, Tori Inoue at the moment. Let's see what the discard is going to be here to the Celestis. Tori is doing a really nice job of keeping the battlefield 
pretty clear. Hasn't found a copy of Ulrin's Epiphany just yet or the mm -hmm. truly problematic Holebreaker horror. But if you're Brad, <laughs> you got to be thrilled when you saw the deck list and saying, okay, there's only one yeah. over there. So it's not the end of the world. Yeah, Mono Green, typically not a fan of interactive bounce spells. No, 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 no. Does not want to play against Holebreaker Horror at all. We're going to see Old Growth Troll hit the battlefield once again. Ulven Old Odyssey is just going to hang out in that Blizzard Brawl, effectively a dead card right now, as there's just no creatures on the board. Next turn, though, there's a good old Goldspan Dragon. Divide by Zero actually ends up being a really, really good draw here because you have the ability right now to play a Goldspan Dragon, attack, generate a treasure that can sacrifice for two mana and still cast Divide by Zero. So this, mm -hmm. actually, bees, this actually ends up being a really nice draw and is going to do a really nice job of counteracting the Blizzard Brawl that Toru may assume Brad has because he hasn't had a reason to cast it yet. But Divide by Zero ended up being, again, in my estimation, a pretty darn good draw step. Cedric, haven't you been playing Magic for the last couple of months? They always have Blizzard Brawl. If they're mono green uh, and it's snow, there's always a Blizzard Brawl. It's always in hand, really? Yep. Okay, wish I had yep. done that. <laughs> At least when I'm playing against anyone else on mono green. So, no Goldspan Dragon deployed here. Just gonna hang tight there. Unexpected Rainfall and Divide by Zero are options here for Toru. Does have enough mana as well to Galvanic Iteration and Unexpected Windfall, or even Divide by Zero if he wants to. Let's see what the discard's gonna be. Wouldn't be surprised if it's just the pathway, yeah. Okay. Alright, so... This is mighty suspicious. Anytime an Izzet player does nothing, of you, know, course. you know they have shenanigans. When they do nothing and have access to Galvanic Iterations in, in the graveyard, you know, you're probably <laughs> assuming some sort of removal spell. Maybe it's Fading Hope twice. Uh, if you're Brad right now from the Mount of Green side, you're just thinking to yourself, what's the worst thing that happens to me this turn, right? Because these Izzet decks have, again, a bevy of removal and a bevy mm -hmm. of interactions. So... I think that's the calculus right now of, okay, what's the worst thing that's going to happen to me? Does it make sense for me to play Uvenwald Oddity pre-combat or post-combat? Looks like he's just going to attack like this. Clear for takeoff with all that damage. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Now that uh, troll token makes it a little bit awkward there for that divide by zero as it can't hit the tokens. We just hit yep. the old growth troll. So I think we're on the uh, Galvanic Iteration Unexpected Windfall from Inoue side of things. Yeah, iteration. Let's, let's make four treasures and get four cards. That seems good. Yeah, boatload of mana, boatload of cards. We'll see what the draws are going to be. But this is four cards coming from this plus a draw step means that he's going to basically refill the entire hand. And depending on what these draw steps are, it could be epiphany time, folks. Okay, bad, bad. Eh, Oof. That's not great. Here we not go again. No. Not great indeed. Ew. Ugh. Boy. Okay, I think we both recoiled in horror there at these draws for Toru. Anyway, that's not good at all. Um, right, so at this point, uh, if our advantage bar was on the screen, it would certainly be advantage Brad Nelson at this point. So I gonna find think some stuff. I think so. You know, I was prepared to say advantage Toru after drawing five new cards to start this <laughs> turn cycle, but I would be wrong about that. So I oh, think yeah. slight advantage for Brad right now. Though Just, Goldspan Dragon has a way of turning it around, right? Uh, but Blizzard Brawl, there's there's things that hurt. And a hasty attacker. This is not looking good here for the Is It Epiphany player. Okay, let's see. Goldspan Dragon does make all of these lovely treasure tokens tap for two. So Galvanic Iteration, you gotta help us out here, buddy. Unexpected windfall. What can you get done? There's a lot of high upside here. Oh yeah. Like a, lo like a lot of upside with this. It can't get worse than what we just saw, right? Well, challenge accepted potentially. You know. Let's see. Okay, okay. braid that kills one thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. All right, fine. Maybe advantage, not so much, Brad Nelson. Then at this yeah, point, let's... with uh, the big old lobster off the top of the library. Gonna make it even. Holebreaker Horror Resolves might be Advantage mm -hmm. Toru. Mm-hmm. I think the most annoying thing about Hellbreaker Horror is, is like, surprise, your things are dead now. Oh, your things are more dead now. Okay, so I'm going to cast some extra spells off of it. Here comes another treasure. So there's 10 mana hanging out there in treasures. There's 13 mana available for Toru in a way right now. 
And yeah, so just doing some simple math here, you see the 13 mana available due to the Goldspan Dragon and the Treasure interaction. 13 minus 7 for the whole Breaker of Horror means that you have 6 mana left over. There's a Braid, there's Celestis maybe finding another spell. Oh. <laughs> okay, oh, very much. Oh boy. Taru is uh, firmly in the driver's seat at this point. Here comes Olven World Oddity to see what it can do on this battlefield. But yeah, Taru is just going to say, no, I'm not super interested in that. Have a Hullbreaker Horror. Yeah, this turn gets sick, right? So you get to start with the horror. Ugh. Then you get to Jawari Disruption this. <laughs> Trigger the Hullbreaker Horror. Oh. Uh, we're just yeah, going to this... bounce some stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Brad I'm knows. Brad, yeah. He's gone. He's gone. One thing I appreciate about Brad Nelson is once he knows, okay, there's no point in seeing this through. Let's get into sideboards and go and sure up our game two. It's the worst card for Mono Green to play against once it's on the battlefield. The absolute worst. So again, mm -hmm. with it, with Is It Epiphany, you can tailor the deck to beat what you want, right? You can tailor it to beat the mirror. You can tailor it very heavily to beat Mono White. If you expect that to be the most played deck, you can tailor it very heavily to beat Mono Green with more Holebreaker Horrors, more... Um, Demon Bolts, stuff like that, right? Again, Toru is doing a real hedge here with <laughs> one Hullbreaker Horror, one Leer main, one sideboard. Looks like he's going to be sideboarding in the additional one. One Burn Down the House main. Looks like another one's coming in. You know, Thundering Rebuke main has a bunch of Smoldering Eggs. So he's just doing this full hedge, which is kind of saying, I'm, I'm not great against any of them, but I have some weird like one ofs that I could draw that are timely, right? Tested yep. Talents could come up in the Is It Mirror. You draw it against Mono Green, pretty bad for the most part. So he, he's just kind of saying, I want to be kind of good-ish against everything, but not great against anything game one. But then I can sideboard into being great against something in game number two. So for me, it was really key for Brad to win that first game. And unfortunately for him, he did not. Did not. He's going to have to rely on his sideboard cards here, bringing in those snakeskin veils to prevent any bounce or removal. That Tori, in a way, may have. And as we can see, he's got plenty of that. And he's got Lear, Disciple of the Drowned, to replay all of those cards from the graveyard. So, it's going to be interesting to see how this one shakes out. But, yeah, up a game. you got to give it to Tori, in a way. He is looking pretty good here. One thing that makes Goldspan Dragon so unique of a card in this deck, too, we saw how powerful it was at the World Championships for Yuta mm -hmm. Takahashi when he won that event. It's not a hedge against anything. It's just a good card against everything. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's not matchup specific, but you saw the power and the mana generation, the treasure generation of that card. So even though there's only one main deck copy, it's just kind of this card that's just, hey, I'm really powerful. Hey, I can do things that no other card can do. And we <laughs> saw that in that game. It's like the cherry on top, right? Because, you know, copying unexpected windfall is pretty powerful as is. It's, you know, it's four mana, four cards. Cool. But then as soon as a Goldspan Dragon works its way into the equation, it's like the possibilities are endless. And there's Elrond's Epiphany, but this hand is pretty darn awful. Yeah, Toru's hand's pretty bad, and Brad's hand is like the ultimate gamble, because <laughs> if you draw a green land, you're thrilled. Oh, you look like Ideal. a genius, right? Yeah, and, and you've kind of got two turns to do it, right? Because you can just go Forest, Pack Leader, next turn, draw step, kind of irrelevant, play another Pack Leader, and then I get another look at it. <laughs> okay. Now, this is this is still totally fine because Snakeskin Veil is so good in this matchup for Brad. Mm -hmm. He just needs to find land number three, ideally a forest, so he can go turn, you know, pack leader, pack leader, if, if he kept the both the pack leaders and just have Snakeskin Veil the entire game. And that card yeah. is so problematic for Izzet. Yeah. This is a really good hand for things? Nelson. Yeah, on the other side of things, not great. Two tap lands to kick things off for Toru in a way. Yeah, yeah, there's some stumbling and some fumbling. I do think you have to keep it and hope that the draw steps are pretty kind as far as mana is concerned. Yeah. But it, it's, it's a rough one. Yeah, the two expressive iterations are also, like, you know, the, the saving grace of the hand. Ooh. Oh. You're going to keep I was gonna the... Say, no, send that back. I was going to say, you got to send that one back, yeah, right? Yeah, the yeah. Holebreaker Horror is so expensive. Send the pinchy boy back to the bottom of the library. I guess we're going to kick things off here. Yeah, there's that forest. That's huge. It's absolutely nice. huge. Ranger now class. Got Ra Ranger's class is online. Next turn, you can play Werewolf Pack Leader plus Forest, have Snakes can veil up, and just continuously uh -huh. defend himself. Though, this Smoldering Egg entering on this turn as opposed to the next turn is pretty big, too. Yeah, Smoldering Egg will stave off some damage for a certain amount of time. Now, let's see what Brad Nelson wants to do here. Are we going to go for the line that you mentioned? Is he going to risk it for the biscuit, get the old growth troll down? Are we going to up 
ranger class and get that ticking. Things to do. Yeah, no shortage of options, right? You mentioned the ranger class option, which is kind of better over the course of the game because mm -hmm. now two, two, we attack three, three, probably be a block. Question mark. My voice goes up. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, I okay. love magic sometimes. The little standoff. Yeah. I mean, I guess the question from Toru's side is, okay, if you have a snakeskin veil, do you use it? Uh-huh. Do you value getting my egg off the board, or do you rather... Would you like to keep your stuff alive, is basically the question he's asking. So, prefers to keep the egg around. I want to turn that, that kind... into an Ashmouth dragon. That was kind of fun. Yeah, it's like, oh, just, I'm, I'm swinging, so you can do what you want. I'm just going to Yeah, you out. you decide. <laughs> it's up to you what you want to do, but I'm attacking. <laughs> and clearly placing a lot of value into smoldering egg being on the battlefield and eventually transforming. Yeah. It's a good draw, too. Another land off the top. Very nice. This allows Brad to... Attempt to cast an old growth troll. First things first, though. Going to swing in here, get another counter on this itty bitty wolf. There's your land. There's your pack leader with two snake skins up. Do we go for the divide by zero now? I don't see why not, right? Yeah. He's got better plans for that. Oh, we're trying to get the snakeskin veils out the hand? Potentially. Okay. Well, he's, he suspects one. Does he suspect the second? Not that he can do yeah. anything about it right yeah, now. Yeah, and, th yeah, and that's kind of the problem, right, is you can know about the set. Whoa. I thought Brad was going to, like, concede mode again. I'm like, hey, buddy, you're doing really, <laughs> you're doing really good this game. Where are you going? <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at that. Smoldering Egg now with five counters on. It's close to flipping. Uh, let's see what Toru's looking at here. It's going to bring Burn Down the House to hand. And there goes a land into exile. An unknown card back into the library. Could go for the second Express Iteration to get the dragon. Yeah, do you want to transform right now? It's such a tough one, because if there's a fight spell, you are shields down. I mean, he has nothing to work with it right now, but now it's telling Brad, hey, look, I have nothing to protect this with. Yeah, your expressive your expressive iteration, pardon me, gets a little bit worse. You don't get all of the value when you tap out for it and have already played a land for the turn. Yeah. But you do get to add another card to your hand, which is a copy of a braid. It's a powerful card. And that land is going to go into exile. I'm turn it's gonna be passed back here. I don't think we'll see an attack. I'd this be is looking shocked. this is looking bad news bears for Toro at this moment. I think Brad is in a pretty good position because however he decides to attack, a counter will go on one. Likely the other one will get blocked, because otherwise, ouch. Well, here's this... the big here's the big question. Yeah. What does Brad what does Brad want to play around? Your opponent has five cards. Just resolve, just resolve two iterations. Do you want to play around Burn Down the House? Do you want to play around the Braid? Do you want to play around Fading Hope? Galvanic Iteration? There's a million cards to play around. Yeah. Right? We have the privilege of having perfect information. Mm -hmm. We see the Burn Down the House. Obviously, you keep the Snakeskin Veil. Mm -hmm. Obviously. But Brad doesn't know that. Brad knows that it's <laughs> in the deck somewhere. And so I wouldn't be surprised if, yeah, this exchange is fine. I have my 5-5. Five, five. Play my land. Play my old growth troll. Go ahead. Tor is going to have to deal with these big creatures on this turn, but as you mentioned, that snakeskin veil is there to protect the werewolf pack leader. An old growth troll is kind of a resilient little threat. It likes to come back just in a different form once it attaches itself to one of these forests. Oh, does he ever just go for the divide by zero here? And this is another question because you've got a lot of options right now for Toru mm. as well. Now, of course, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, Brad probably has another snakeskin veil. He's playing the game in kind of a weird way. Sure, it's it's the kind of card that you're going to want to put your opponent on anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a divide by zero. I have an abrade. I have a burn down the house that can make tokens. Is there any value in doing that? 
I, I, tapping out for Leer is probably the worst thing I could do this turn. Is there any value in me casting Expressive Iteration off the jump? Well, there's the easy part. And for turn. Now, are we going to go divide by zero root? Is it going to be burned down the house time? Big decisions here for Toru. He is up a game at the moment, but Brad Nelson looks to be firmly in the driver's seat. Oof. It's a good... Oh, hey, that's a good draw. That's a good draw for Brad. Future turns, assuming we're playing future turns. <laughs> you know, that's a great inevitability to just kind of have at the ready. But mm -hmm. if you're Brad, I think it might be time to just get busy in the red zone here. Oh, yes. Divide by zero being fired off pre-combat to avoid the werewolf pack leader attacking and getting a card. But uh, bad news bears here for Toru, as Snakeskin Vale will say, no thank you, no touchy. I'm hexproof. That card in this matchup, Snakeskin Veil, vale, is uh -huh. just, it's it's just irreplaceable. <laughs> it's so it's just good. so good in this matchup. And nothing, unfortunately, that Tori can do here. A braid doesn't kill anything. 11 points of damage coming over the finish line here. And we are tied up a game apiece between Tori and Wei and Brad Nelson. Both of these players undefeated and would like to remain as such. Now... Now things get interesting because you're going to see how Toru, Toru, excuse me, looks to change things up a little bit. Cinderclasm gone, gold span back, a little bit better on the play as opposed to the draw. <laughs> you see the sideboarding in the top. All the smoldering eggs are in now. You've got the additional copy of Leer, uh, Rebuke, <clears throat> excuse me, another burn down the house, another braid. A couple obvious cards coming out here in Tessa Talos and Juari Disruption. The disruption's a little bit better on the play than the draw, but you've got higher impact cards there. Brad not doing a ton of sideboarding with just the Oddity and the other Veil coming in, Inscription going out. But there's a world of difference between being on the play and on the draw in this matchup. And so I'm do, curious to see what Tora's approach is. I do love the difference in the sideboard. It's like Mono agreed, simple. This keep in, it, that keep out. It, keep it clean and easy. <laughs> It is. Uh, Corey mentioned this uh, kind of at the top. Brad tested a ton of is it Epiphany coming into this uh, coming mm -hmm. in this event. Uh, he thinks that Alrun's Epiphany is busted and bannable and all these other things. Sure, whatever. Uh, to see him kind of change late in the game to Mono Green is notable because he doesn't generally kind of play this style of all in aggressive deck. Mm -hmm. You only play this if you feel confident in your is it Epiphany matchup, in my estimation. And the assumption that not that many people, that people aren't going to play that many copies of Holebreaker Horror because they can't. If you expect the Is It Epiphany players to play a ton of copies of Holebreaker Horror, Mono Green is so much worse. But if they're hedging like Toru is, mm -hmm. it's worth the risk. Can I just say I love Brad Nelson's hand? I, I mean, one, two, three. Yep, let's go. It's what let's I, it's what on, I live for. It's what, should, I just get, <laughs> should I just put the advantage bar all the way to him right now since his hand is one, two, three? <laughs> and Brad? Is that might, misuse be, of the advantage bar? Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay, little. okay. They, they might take away our new toys. This is tough here for Toru. This hand, I mean, any it's hand that doesn't good. have any hand that doesn't have any lands looks really good. So you know, this hand looks good. You could play Spikefield Hazard. Oh, he's actually going to keep. Oh, I didn't think that was actually going to happen. I was going to say all the reasons why you have to send it back. This is bold. I really like it. <laughs> I really like it. I, I love. I love the gamble. All right, land, land on land. Okay, okay. It's a okay. Tough land, but it's fine. Turn three, things are active and live. That's the only turn you can do anything anyway. So this is fine, but is it too slow up against what we see here for Brad, who is flooding, might I add? Yeah, is is flooding. Now, Epiphany can find land number four, potentially. But it looks like it's we're like going to leave up divide by zero. That's yeah. a good job for Nelson. Okay. Oh. Ooh, I like the gamble. I like the gamble of the keep. Old move indeed. Divide by zero, looming in hand. They're waiting to pounce on whatever three drop hits the board. Brad Nelson's going to go for the Kazandu Mammoth. Is this going to get sent back? Yeah, it sure is. is. Get out of here. That's happening. That's get not happening. Here. Ooh, Anna burned down the house. Man, if Toru can find these lands with the help mm -hmm. of environmental sciences, that will be possible. This board is going to go bye bye fast. So many decisions to make here. Definitely wants to hit a land. Environmental sciences is a guaranteed land. Expressive iteration sometimes whiffs. It has been known to do that. Yeah, this oh boy, this is 
So you play sciences, you get a land, you play iteration mm -hmm. top three, hopefully find a land for your burn down the house, hopefully find a land that ETB's untapped to yeah. burn down the house, that sort of thing. Whew. The life gained here may matter as well. Yep. So there's an island. Here's iteration. It's fresh iteration, let's see what comes to hand, what gets exiled. Untapped land is the dream. That's a long to... pause. That That's a long, long pause. pause. I would love to get a look at this hand here if we can see what the options are. I've been doing this for too long. There's not an untapped land there. That's too long of a pause. Yeah. Yeah. Or the other two cards are just super good and the land's the easy part. You never know. It's That's never... not an untapped. That's uh... a haul of the Storm of Giants. I've been doing this for too long. That's icky. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. All right, egg to hand, unexpected windfall. Oh boy. Okay, it's all right though. I mean, he's not dead yet. He's, he's still okay, 16. All right. Oof, and the land went away. So he's <coughs> he's hedging all his bets on the top of the library being kind to him. Ooh, yep, 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 yep. Still, still plenty to do, even if yep. it's not. And also the hand is still, like the hand is good. Yeah. Highest upside is drawing a land, but if you don't, you can windfall, you can iteration, you can egg. Like, you got stuff. You got mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Egg, iteration, block it down, find something. You know, there's ways for Toru to stall, so he's by no means dead right now. Old Growth Troll. I'm gonna join the fray here. Chunky 4-4 four, four body joins the battlefield, or does it? Brad's just thinking about it. But he's going to let it off, and uh, smartly so, is put stops on every single phase of Fortoru, so it looks as if he's got something, but we know he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta play as though you have the veil. Uh -huh. You have to. So Toru uh, drew a land in quotes <laughs> in Chawari <laughs> Disruption. <laughs> That's no land. Mm. Oh, boy. Now, this this is where it gets good, because... As an aggressive player myself, I just sit back and wait for the opponent to do stuff, which is what yep. Brad is doing right now. Toru <laughs> is the one with all the decisions, which can be a little scary because he has quite a few of them. Oh, yeah. Do you go egg plus iteration? Do you um, do you play unexpected windfall first, discard something, draw some cards? That will kind of decide your play. Um, do you just start with iteration? Is there any value in foretelling Outrun's epiphany right now? Looks like we're going to start with the egg. Yeah, I like getting a blocker down at least because if there was nothing on the board there and there's an open world oddity for Brad Nelson, then you're a little dead. So smoldering egg down just to soak up some of that damage. Expressive iteration sees a hall of storm giants. It's a land. Hall is not given up. That card is. <laughs> that card just wants to be there. It just wants to hang out. Just, just come on. Just, just take me. Put me on the battlefield. Yeah. Put me in, coach. Nelson has some very high upside draw steps and some also some pretty bad ones. So uh -huh. this will be interesting to see what happens here with his draw step. Blizzard Brawl, probably the best of the bunch. Oh, yeah. Snakeskin Veil? Not too bad. So let's see. This is <clears throat> this is class up, I think. Mm -hmm. Put the counter on the troll. Yeah, keep that make troll it nice a five. and big. Yeah, make it a five, and then the veil can make it bigger, I, I think. Uh, having trolls stick around is very useful against these little itty creatures that the Is It Epiphany deck. It's funny, I I don't know who's advantaged right now. I think it's slightly Brad. Slightly. Until, I mean, this until Toru hits seven mana, I would say yeah, it's a, it's a little bit Brad. Because when it's seven mana, then oh boy, things are gonna get spicy. Hmm. But even so, next turn. Toru does have burned down the house, can absolutely reset the board. Well, minus the old growth troll if that gets the counter. Yeah. But we didn't we didn't plus Ranger class though. No, we didn't. So let's see, four, five, six, push you. Okay, so I'm trying to so Brad's play. Let's see. Right, so bro. do you six? <clears throat> put you to six. Mm hmm You can play Mammoth post. So that if you get if you get hit by burn down the house, your old growth troll dies. Put it on untapped land, sack that land, make a 4-4, four, four, turn, turn on Ranger's class next turn, make it a 5-5, five, five, and then um, 
Six gives it to six six for lethal. Yep. And burn down the house, dealing damage to all the creatures is also going to kill the egg. Yep. So I think that's Ooh. the current I think that's the current plan. Oh wow. Are we not blocking here? Oh, we're blocking something. <laughs> Yeah. We're blocking something. It's, it's just, a, say. just a matter of what. So that's what I think Brad's plan yeah. is right now. That, that and it's actually pretty good. I actually think so. This ends up being really good. Like you play the mammoth post. It's mm -hmm. actually more enticing for your opponent to cast burn down the house. Oh, yeah. Right. Because you have so many things. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? Because, OK, kill that. You take four, you get eight. Now, does Brad want to play the mammoth? Has anything changed with that block? Because now the idea of my troll dies, make a four, four rangers class, trigger five, five veil, deal you six, isn't mm -hmm. lethal. That's not so. A good block there from Toru. Yeah. So now does Brad want to go the mammoth route any longer? I'm not sure about that. And remember, Toru knows that Brad has the mammoth. Mm-hmm. Well, they're kind of just uh, sussing each other out here. It's like, what do you have? I mean, there's a there's six cards in Toru's hand. Brad's got to think something's up. So this is why we're seeing this uh, long pause here from Brad Nelson, just deliberating whether or not Kazandu Mammoth should hit the board at this point. I'm gonna go with no, probably not. So here's a little thing you can you can infer from both players. Mm -hmm. The turn that the turn that Smoldering Egg was cast and then Expressive Iteration was cast. Mm -hmm. That felt very much like a, I am really looking for land five, right? Yeah. I'm, I really got to find land five for burn down the house. So Brad can put Toru on, okay, you're playing towards burn down the house with how you played that turn, right? Mm -hmm. Toru can also say the same and say, you know I'm playing for burn down the house, so I'm going to play differently now. Yeah. So what does that differently look like here for Toru, who draws a smoldering egg off the top of the library? Looks like unexpected windfall was the first consideration there. But now, I think it's just burned down the house. He just wants to blow up this battlefield. Yeah, so if he cleans it all up, like he has right now, five mm -hmm. to everything. Thing I mentioned previously happens, right? So Troll goes yep. on <clears throat> Troll goes on the land. He's going to float one, put it there, make a people. <laughs> but Br Brad's got to get it over with, because we know what happens when seven mana shows up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now it's do or die time. So he's gonna hope for. I don't know if he left in the inscriptions of abundance. Ugh, no, those are those. Oddity. Yeah, those are gone. He's got to find an oddity type card. Ugh. So he plays a land. He activates Ranger's class. Get in here. Put the counter there. Put you to three. And now, now's where the fun starts. At least for the Is it Epiphany deck. If if we've got the mana available. Such a good block by Toru. Ooh. Such a good block with the smoldering up on the, on the old growth troll, which was like the you know that I have burned down the house, I mm -hmm. know that you know type thing going on there. I know you know I know. Yeah, that was really, really good. <laughs> that was really good. But here's the problem now, is he hasn't drawn another land. He does have smoldering egg. If that hits the board, that's still lethal with the ranger class uptick and the snakeskin veil. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how he gets out of this. Well, Windfall could be the best place to start. Yeah. Two cards, two treasures. He's like a fading hope or something just to get this off the battlefield, but he, he but needs you're... two pieces of removal. That's the problem. Uh, it feels like a two pieces of interaction type thing. So yeah. let's just go. One thing I like to do is I try to just simplify it. Hullbreaker Horror, yeah. doesn't matter. All no. Runs Epiphany, doesn't matter. We don't have, we don't even have really, in my opinion, like kind of the spare mana to foretell. So let's take two mm -hmm. options off. Rebuke, it's an F right now. It's better if you have something in combination with it. Yeah. So egg is, egg is a great place to start. So you can go egg plus windfall. Fingers crossed. Hope like heck. Something off the top of the deck. Those Ugh. stink. <laughs> and then you can sacrifice treasure. Well, no, that's not even good, that's not even good either. Yeah, so uh -huh. now I think it might actually be lethal. Yeah, uh, I right? think Brad's got this, yeah. With well, the snake skin bell and the counter. I guess I'll say this. Mm -hmm. It's lethal if he goes for it. <laughs> okay, all right. It's, all right. Lethal. it's lethal. It's lethal if he goes for it. Will Brad Nelson ever not go for it though? Well, depending on what the so his draw step is going to determine what he can and cannot do. So Sculptor of Winter stinks. Mm. So 
Let's eliminate that and say, I can't afford to play additional turns because the longer we go, the worse it is for me. Yeah. So I think he has to shove and just yeah. say attack. Snakes can, you know, you block my six, my six, six trampler and do an 04. Snakes can veil, cross them their fingers. Mm hmm. Let's do it. Brad Nelson, swing. Yeah, it's just, it's just assess the situation and just say, if you get to untap, I'm probably dead. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically you. Oh, okay, we're going, okay. We're going. I thought for a second they passed through his attack step. I was very concerned. But no, it's fine. Smoldering Egg is going to block. He is going to go for it, question mark? Voices go up, question mark? Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, my uh, goodness. I, look, this is this is way easier than it looks. Your opponent yeah. just drew a bunch yeah. of cards, has access to three mana. That three mana can be anything. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> it sure can be. You gotta go for it, Brad. Come on, you can't make one tap. If you untap, you will die. Snakes get bail on the troll. That's good. Oh. And that is the game. Heck yes. Yeah. Woo! Oh, wow. Brad Nelson with the read.